UTFO's 1984 hit, Roxanne, Roxanne, tells the story of Kangol Kid, Dr. Ice, and the educated rapper trying to romance a fictional woman named Roxanne. The song itself was not a diss track. With the song in the public eye, a relatively unknown Queensbridge DJ named Marley Marl, who by day worked in the Sergio Valente Jean factory, decided to record a response to Roxanne Roxanne. What happened was Marley Marl, who lived right across from me in another building, like directly across from me, he said, well, listen, you know what, Shante, I heard that you can rhyme. And I said, yeah, I can. I said, but look, I'm right now I'm doing the laundry because my mom was like obsessed with this laundry thing. He said, look, it's only going to take you two minutes. Just come up here. I want you to hear this beat. Did you hear this song before? So then we heard, I heard that boom, 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 Roxanne Roxanne. I said, okay, so now what? He said, let me hear you rhyme. I said, okay. Well, my name is Roxanne, and he was like, oh, my name is Roxanne, uh, don't you know, I just a cold rock a party and I do this show. I said I met these three guys, and you know it's true. Uh, let me tell you and explain them all to you. I met this dude with the name of a hat. I didn't even walk away. I didn't give him no rap. The first 5,000 copies, I think, was pressed up from the record company recording it over the radio. Listen very close, because I don't say this every day. My name is Roxanne, and they call me Sartre. And so, you know, here I am on the radio for the first time, and, you know, my name's just starting to, you know, blow up a little bit, and someone shooting me down, you know, <laughs> right after my success. Pow! Every time that I see him, he says, oh, Rock, you see, compared to me, this week, compared to mine. Roxanne's Revenge, recorded by 13-year-old Shante Gooden, was an instant sensation, selling approximately 250,000 copies. It's like, hey, that's, that's not fair. We created this, and, and, and she's selling more now. You know, we're like, okay, we need to hurry up and, and crush this. And so we wanted to come out with what we would refer to as the real Roxanne. Yo, Kango. Yeah, what's up, girl? I'm the real Roxanne, and I rock your world. While the UTFO's answer, the real Roxanne, never mentioned Roxanne Chante or Roxanne's revenge, it was a direct challenge. Roxanne. The Lady Devastator, I make it feel hotter than it is in Grenada. The R-O-X-A-N-N-E, Roxanne is who I be. What for? What? 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 <laughs> they got a Roxanne already. Me, what do, what do you want another one for? And then I was like, oh, because they angry. That's all I need to know. Roxanne Shante responded with, bite this, calling out the real Roxanne. The real Roxanne is standing right here. Sparky D, <laughs> Sparky D. Curtis Blow, and Curtis Blow. Run DMC, Run DMC. And LL Cool J practically announcing to the world that it was a free for all. I mean, there was jams, Roxanne's sister, Roxanne's mother, you know, uh, just just people that had nothing to do with it. And the funniest thing about it is, um, I don't think that none of the female rappers that actually were, you know, involved in that name were really Roxanne. KRS-One and Scott LaRock's Boogie Down Productions, as part of their legendary Bridge Wars battle with MC Shan and Marley Marl's Juice Crew, targeted Roxanne Chante in BDP's The Bridge Is Over. I remember that KRS line, though. Roxanne Chante is only good for steady pumping. <laughs> that was disrespectful. Clearly offended by the diss, Roxanne Chante confronted KRS-One in a New York bank. She's like... I ain't never did nothing to you. I ain't never said your name in a record. Why you had to say my name? I didn't have an answer. All that battle raw raw was gone. I was like, uh oh. Now KIS one, you should go on vacation with the name sounding like a whack radio station. So step back, peasants popping all that junk, or else PD people stand for broken down punk. Cause I'm an all star just like Julius Irvin, and Roxanne Chante is only good for steady service. Roxanne Chante continued dissing into the 1990s, taking on Queen Latifah, Yo-Yo, and a bevy of other female MCs in 1992's Big Mama. Artists of all genders from all parts of the country got swept up in the battle. Ice Cube appeared on a J.J. Fad track dissing Chante, and Dr. Dre and Snoop's Bitches Ain't Shit was considered a response to Roxanne Chante's Brothers Ain't Shit. Everywhere I went, there was somebody answering the Roxanne answer. And when I'm telling you that there was over 55 response records, we're talking records that were actually played. You'll never have another Roxanne phenomenon again, ever. It'll never happen again. The Roxanne battles remain significant in the history of hip hop as the moment when rappers discovered that dissing other artists on wax could both start careers 
and sell records. My whole situation was a flu, and and I thank Kendo for that and for being very hostile about that because that's what turned it into a career. Because had they not been so upset about me being Roxanne, like, no, she's not, no, that's not right, I'd have never been able to make those other 15 records. <laughs> 